The Tale of Hansel and Gretel. Hard by a great forest dwelt a poor woodcutter. He worked day and night to put bread on the table. But times were difficult and food was scarce. The woodcutter's pride and joy were his two children, his bold, resourceful son, Hansel, and his sweet, compassionate daughter, Gretel. A jealous, shrewish woman saw the love in the man's eyes when he gazed at his children and resolved to get rid of them. One night, as they lay in bed, she spoke. Listen, man, early tomorrow, take the two children, give them each a little piece of bread, lead them to the thickest part of the woods, and leave them there, for we can no longer feed them. The woodcutter was horrified and told his wife that he could never abandon his children. Oh, you fool! Then all of us will starve. You may as well claim the planks for our coffins. And she gave him no peace until he agreed. The two children had not been able to sleep because of their hunger. And they heard their stepmother's words. Gretel cried bitter tears and said to Hansel, It is over with us. Shush, Gretel said Hansel. Don't worry. I know what to do. He waited until the adults were sleeping and slipped outside. The moon shone brightly on the white pebbles in front of the house, and Hansel filled his pockets with them. Then, he snuck back inside and whispered, Don't worry, Gretel. Sleep well. It was still dark outside when the woman came and woke them. Get up, you lazy bones. We're going into the forest to fetch wood. Take one piece of bread each for your lunch. You'll not get any more. As they walked to the woods, Hansel kept turning back again and again towards the house. Why do you keep looking back, asked the woodcutter. Keep up with us. Oh, father, I'm looking at my white cat sitting on the roof who wants to say goodbye to me. <laughs> you fool, said the woman. That isn't your cat. It's the morning sun shining on our chimney. But Hansel kept turning back to the house, and every time he did so, he dropped a shiny pebble on the ground. Finally, they arrived in a clearing, and the wife told the children, Wait here. We'll come back for you when we're finished cutting trees. Hansel and Gretel sat and ate their bread, listening to the sound of the axe. After a while, their eyes grew weary and closed. As they slept, the sound of the axe continued. But the woodcutter and his wife had gone home long ago, leaving a branch tied to a dead tree that the wind blew back and forth. finally awoke, it was dark. Gretel began to weep, but Hansel said, wait a little until the moon comes up. After the full moon rose, Hansel took his little sister by the hand, and together they followed the pebbles that glistened like newly minted coins all the way back to their father's house. The stepmother barked, you wicked children! Why did you stay in the woods so long? But the woodcutter was overjoyed to see his children and promised never to leave them again. 
but not long afterwards. Hard times again descended on the family, and again the children heard their stepmother's voice. Husband, we have but half a loaf left in the house. We must get rid of the children. We will take them deeper into the woods this time, so they will never find their way back. You did it once. How is it any different this time? Once again, Hansel waited until the adults were sleeping and slipped to the door. But the stepmother had locked the house, and Hansel could not get outside. <laughs> Gretel wept bitter tears, but Hansel comforted her. Go to sleep, little sister. God will protect us. Just before dawn, the stepmother cried, Get up! Get up! We must go to the forest again to cut wood. Each child received a crust of bread, and they went out into the woods. On the way, Hansel crumbled the bread in his pocket, then stopped every so often to throw the crumbs on the ground. Hansel, why are you always stopping to look around? Keep walking. Oh, um, Father, I'm looking at my pigeon sitting on the roof who wants to say goodbye to me. <laughs> you fool, said the woman. That is the morning sun shining on the chimney. Finally, they arrived deeper in the forest than they had ever been. While the woodcutter and his wife went into the forest to chop wood, Hansel and Gretel sat by the fire and shared Gretel's piece of bread, for Hansel's was all gone, scattered along the path. Then their eyes grew weary, and they fell asleep. When they awoke, the night was dark. Gretel began to weep, but Hansel said, Wait until the moon rises, my sister. Then we will follow the crumbs of bread back to our home. The full moon rose and shone on the clearing, but Hansel could see no crumbs for the birds in the woods had found them and packed them all up. So the children set out walking. Walk through the entire night and the next day from morning until evening, but they did not find their way out of the woods. They were terribly hungry for they had eaten only a few small berries that were growing on the ground. As night fell, they lay down under a tree to sleep. They had managed to only go deeper and deeper into the woods. If help did not come soon, they would perish. On the morning of the third day, they saw a beautiful snow-white bird sitting on a branch. It sang so prettily that they stopped to listen. stretched its wings and flew before them. They followed it until it landed on the roof of a little house. A house made entirely of gingerbread with a roof made of cake and windows of clear sugar. Let us help ourselves to a good meal, cried Hansel. I'll eat from the roof and Gretel, you eat from the window. That will be nice and sweet. <laughs> Suddenly, they stopped feasting. From inside the house, they heard a gentle voice. Nipple, nipple, little mouse. Who is nibbling at my house? The children sang back. Tis heaven's child, the tempest wild. The door creaked. the oldest woman they had ever seen. Hansel and Gretel were so frightened that they dropped the cake and candy they were eating. The woman shook her head and spoke. Children, who has brought you here? Come in. Come in. And the children took her hand and followed 
enter into the house. After a delicious meal of pancakes with sugar, apples, nuts, and whipped cream, the children went to bed thinking they were in heaven. The old woman had only pretended to be so kind. Early in the morning, she snuck into the children's bedroom to look at their plump red cheeks and muttered to herself, that will be a dainty mouthful. Then she seized Hansel and shut him up in a cage. She went to Gretel and shook her until she awoke and cried, Get up, you lazy thing! Fetch some water and cook some food to fatten your brother! Gretel began to weep, but all in vain. She was forced to do what the wicked witch told her to do. Every morning, the witch crept to the little cage and croaked. So, stretch out your finger so I may feel if you are fat enough. Hansel, however, stretched out a little bone to her so the old woman thought he grew no fatter. This went on for weeks until finally the witch could wait no longer. Come, Gretel, she cried to the girl. Fly around and bring water. Fat or not, I will cook him and eat him tomorrow. How wretched was the poor little sister when she had to fetch the water, and how her tears did flow down her cheeks. Dear God, do help us, she cried. If the wild beasts in the forest had eaten us, we would at least have died together. Keep your noise to yourself. All that won't help you at all. Early in the morning, Gretel had to go out and start the fire. We will bake first. The dough is ready, and I've heated the oven. Creep in and see if it is hot enough. But Gretel saw what she had in mind and said, I don't understand. How do I get in it? Silly goose! Through the door like this! And when the witch stuck her head in the oven door, Gretel gave her a push! <gasps> Gretel ran and ran quick as lightning to Hansel's cage, unlocked the door and sprung the gate open, crying, Hansel, we are saved! The old witch is dead! They ran into the house and saw in every corner <gasps> chests full of pearls and jewels. These are better than pebbles, said Hansel, and they both filled their pockets. As they left through the back door, Hansel noticed a path leading into the woods. Perhaps this will guide us home again, he told Gretel, and they set off. And sure enough, after a very few hours, they saw their father's house through the trees. The woodcutter, whose wife had left him, was delighted to see his children. As they emptied their pockets of the pearls and jewels, golds and precious stones, the three of them danced around the house in delight. All their cares were at an end, and they lived happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs>